There are two pieces for every slot in F12, and if one of them happens to be solved, then keyhole is a quick way of solving the other one. And here's another example. To use this technique effectively, make sure you can do D turns with your ring fingers. So if the edge is solved and you have to insert a corner, then make sure there is at least one other unsolved slot that you can use. So what you do is bring the unsolved corner spot to any of the other unsolved slots, for example right here, and then insert this corner as if it belonged here. And then put everything back. But make sure you are only using unsolved slots. So if this one was solved, I cannot do the same thing as what I just did. Instead, I can move this corner to a different slot and insert this one into that slot, for example, like this. So you have to be familiar with how corners can be inserted into different slots all over the cube. Now if the corner is solved and you want to insert the edge, then you can move any unsolved corner into this spot to replace it, like that. And then take this edge and insert it into here. Now since edge insertions is not something you would have done quite so much, especially with the beginner method, then here's some tips for how to know how to insert these edges. So first you want to make sure this edge is oriented, or in other words, its side color can match the side center by turning the top layer. You want to take it off of that center, anywhere is fine as long as it's not touching the same center, move the spot it wants to go up, move it in, and move it back down, and then restore the corner. Now, for example, if it was like this, now this is a bad edge because its side color cannot match either of the side centers. So one way I can do this is replace this corner with an unsolved corner, then do a cube rotation, and then insert it. And then move this back. But if you do require a cube rotation to make it a good edge, there is a way that you won't have to do that. All you have to do is a single wide U or wide U prime. So you have to do it in a way where the slot ends up aligned with an unsolved corner. Like that. Insert. And restore. I'll show some practical examples of when it's good to use keyhole, but first, when you probably should not. If you want a keyhole insert a corner and its white is facing up, then this is not the best time to use it. An example of how this would be done is if I move this corner out of the way and then insert this one into here. Now, these always take a lot more moves to insert. For example, R U2 R prime it turns it into a better case and then insert like that and then move everything back. And that is not much faster than just the standard way of doing it like this. And you'd also have to find an unsolved slot to do this on, so it's better probably to just do the normal way. And even if keyhole is faster, actually the best thing to do with a case like this is ignore it and do a different case instead, and that usually creates a better case for this one. Or what happens very often is as you solve a different slot, then this corner reorients itself, and then you just get a very nice case. A specific example of when it's really good to use keyhole is when you have a corner with a flipped edge. And in this case, we can flip this edge while ignoring the corner by just moving in an unsolved corner below it. Now, to flip the edge, you can use a big cube flipping algorithm, but on 3x3, the fastest way to do it is sledgehammer and then insert the edge. And then now you can move this back. The reason this is so good is because if you didn't do that, the other way you'd have to do it is by splitting it up and rotating to pair it up, or you'd have to do sledgehammer followed by this insert. And either way, it's faster to just keyhole flip the edge. One thing you might be thinking is that for corners, it's not really that worth it to do keyhole because the normal way of inserting it is really short. And instead, doing keyhole doesn't really save much time. But one reason keyhole can be really good is because it uses fewer moves, especially because two of those moves are used on D moves, which means very little in the top layer actually moves. So for example, if you notice there's a pair here or just something you want to preserve that you don't want to move too much just to make it easier for look ahead, then doing something like this really changes it. But doing keyhole affects the top layer very little and it will mostly just preserve it. Keyhole is also one of the main methods used to make an X cross. And if you don't know what that is, it's just a cross plus first pair all together, which saves some moves. I have a full video on that here, but I'll show you one example. Here my cross pieces are like this, and I can see that there is a way to get this corner to be solved when making the cross. So if I put orange here, put green here, so orange and green are correct, then insert this one here. Now during inspection, ideally I would have tracked where that orange blue edge is, and it is right here. But then uh, continuing, if I insert the red piece, then I have this one right here. Now, before aligning the cross, I noticed that I can just insert this edge. And this is basically keyhole because the corner is not in the correct spot yet. So if I just insert this now, D2, and then that solves this first pair while doing the cross, which makes an X cross. So of course, if you want to see more examples, go check that video there or link in the description. Then this next thing is super advanced. So unless you're at least sub 15 or sub 10, don't think about adding these to your solves yet, but it's definitely cool to see what's possible. Again, I have a full video on this as well that also includes pseudo X crosses, which I'll also talk about here. So if you have one corner and one edge solved, then the other things you need to solve to complete two F12 pairs is just one corner and one edge. So if I put them in the same spot, then this essentially is an F2L well pair, but they have different colors on them. I need the red-blue corner, which is here, and I need the red-green edge, which is here. 
And so I can just solve these two together by recognizing the case and doing that, and then undo that move. And now I have two F2L pairs solved. The recognition for this is kind of tricky because first you have to notice that this has happened, which is not that easy to notice. And then you have to be able to find both of these pairs, which could be mislotted elsewhere. So if you're looking out for these mid solve and you're not very good at it, it can cost you more time. But if you do pseudo X crosses, this is the type of stuff you would look for in inspection. But again, you have to be very advanced with inspection to be able to do this. And then the second thing that makes it hard is recognition. As you can see, this doesn't look like it's a made pair, but if you just do this, it actually is. They go in together. So you need a different recognition technique for stuff like this. And how I do it is by edge orientation. So I don't really care that these colors don't compare properly. What I actually look for is that this edge matches the side color and the corners right here, which I talk about more in that video. So if you're just here to learn the basics of keyhole and be able to make some of your f cases a little better and not do super advanced stuff like this, then even this is probably beyond what you should be learning right now. But then I am gonna go into one more thing, which is pseudo X crosses. So usually a pseudo X cross would be done on a relatively easy scramble where one piece is made like this one. So here we have the cross and this edge is done. But if we look for its corresponding edge, which would be done during inspection, then we find that it's back here, which is not very convenient for making an X cross. But going back to inspection, we notice that after the first two moves, we can add one more move here and that makes this corner and this edge. Now what we have to do is also solve the red green edge, which is here and the orange blue corner, which is here. So just as a memory trick, we always solve into the slot where the edge belongs. So the red green edge is the one we're solving. It belongs back here. So we're gonna solve into this spot, but make sure that this uh, orange blue corner slot is located here, which it currently isn't. It's currently the green orange in this spot. So what we can do is pair this up first, move that over, and then now we can insert this as a pair into the orange blue corner spot and the red green edge spot. If this is too much for you, then maybe just do regular keyhole stuff from the beginning of the video. Anyway, you'd insert this back here to solve both of them and then align that and you get two pairs solved. So the corner and edge that were solved, that's called the pseudo X cross and the corner and edge that go in together later, like a pseudo pair, which I talked about earlier, uh, that's X cross plus pair makes two pairs. So in other words, the only way a pseudo X cross works is if you do a pseudo pair afterwards, which means a lot of this has to be planned during inspection. Maybe not plan the whole thing, but at least know that it's going to work and you're not gonna have very hard pieces to find for that pseudo pair. So I got really advanced there, but just remember that the basics of keyhole are enough to really improve your solves. I have the keyhole multi-slotting and X cross video here, and I don't remember the extent to which I talked about pseudo X crosses, but if you wanna check it out, it's in that video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.